All right, let's start. Uh, last time we left off, uh, we will we started talking about crawling uh, and uh, and data feeds and basically where do you get the text data from uh, if you're a search engine. And we talked about uh, we talked about where you get it if you're doing a desktop search. Uh, and uh, then we left off uh, talking about the uh, document feeds. Right. So um, just as a recap, document feeds. This is a it's, it's sort of a publishing platform, right? So the, really the biggest idea uh, from, um, the, the biggest change from desktop search or from enterprise search here is that uh, documents never change, right? So if you're doing desktop search, you have files on disk and the user could change the files at any moment. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a publishing paradigm, uh, documents are thrown into the stream and uh, they never change. So this is convenient for you as a search engine because uh, you index them and then you never have to uh, change your index. Right? If they decide to change the document, they issue a new update. Uh, so a new version of the document that is different, so you just index that. Okay. Um, so that makes, uh, that makes a lot of things um, easier. Uh, another thing that makes it easier is um, whether you, uh, whatever type of feed you're working with, there are timestamps that clearly tell you uh, whether this is something that you've seen before or not. So you don't actually have to do checking. Uh, you can, um, if, if, if the timestamp is different, that tells you that you haven't seen this document before, so you should uh, index it. And that's a big, uh, that's a big issue. Um, so there's basically two types of feeds. So uh, there are pool feeds. This is what you're most likely familiar with. This is what all of the data feeds that you can play with are available as. So Twitter is available like that. Uh, anytime you have aggregation from a news site, it's usually available as a pool feed. Um, uh, there are also push feeds. These are typically commercial feeds. So this is if you are building uh, a system that has to process data really, really quickly and using massive volumes. So uh, they use uh, they use push rather than pull. So let's talk about the two different types. So as I said, push are, are typically commercial um, APIs. You wouldn't, I guess the, the the only situation where you'd get exposed to them if if you were building uh, if you were building a news processing system for some for someone who likes to process news in very high volumes. So examples would be uh, um, banks like to do that uh, and um, various four-letter or three-letter agencies like to do that. So um, the, the, the basic way you work with a push feed is uh, you, um, they provide an API, it's usually a closed source API. You log in, you subscribe to a certain stream, and as I said, when you're subscribing, when you're subscribing, the best thing to do is subscribe to everything and then just filter it yourself because likely you'll, be, you'll do a better job at it than, uh, than the guys who are giving you the filter. Uh, uh, and then the, uh, the way it works is you register a callback function, right? So whatever language you're working with, you define a function and that function is going to get called any time they have a new story or a new post or a new bit of text that they want to push to you. Um, so um, typically what's going to happen is that callback function is going to get called every time they have uh, a chunk of data and that data will usually be wrapped in XML of some kind. Uh, and the critical thing there is when you're doing the processing, uh, the, this function, the callback function that you build, uh, it, it, it has to um, it has to really return almost immediately, right? If you're dealing with a high volume feed, they will be trying to call that function very, very frequently. So imagine you know, you're in the middle of the day and, uh, and, and they're feeding you all of the news uh, that fall off the newswire, say, in the United States. Uh, you could easily be getting calls hundreds or thousands times a second. So what that means is you can't really do any work with that data, right? If you get a burst of news, uh, you can't really process the news stories at that, at that point. Uh, if you start taking longer than what they allow, they will start dropping packets, right? So you will start losing news stories. Uh, and depending on the application that you're building, that could be a lot worse than processing them with a little bit of lag. So the typical approach there is your callback function gets called, you get this chunk of data, you put this chunk of data somewhere on disk and you return immediately, right? So that the next instance of a callback 
can get stored as well, so you, so, so you won't lose any, um, any data from the stream. Uh, and then uh, those things get stored on disk, so when you have, uh, you know, when, when the volume slows down a little bit and you, uh, and, 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 and you have a, a sort of a moment where your, uh, where your code doesn't have to do much, then you go and process those things that you dumped on disk. So, um, that's basically uh, that's basically the way you work with them. Um, so uh, vendors typically focus on latency, and that's in the millisecond range. Some of them will enrich your data in various ways. That's useful or not useful, but really the big thing there is when, if you're comparing vendors, it's the, it's the latency that you're looking for. The latency that I'm referring to, that's the amount of time that passed between when this new story became available and when they give it to you, when they call your uh, callback function with that new story. Right? So, so the, the name of the game there is how, how short can you make that time? And of course, whoever has the shortest time in some domains will win, uh, if, if you're talking about banks, for example. <clears throat> so uh, here's an example of a commercial feed that you might see uh, uh, from, from a commercial provider. So uh, this is, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a financial news story, and uh, it usually just looks like your normal XML. So there's a lot of, uh, this is the text of the story itself, that's the title. And you get a lot of metadata com uh, that comes with it. Um, so I guess uh, useful bits of metadata. So they will tell you when this was published. So this is when it was created. They will also tell you uh, when it was uh, received by them. And usually when it's received by them, at the same instance, you would get it in the stream. Right? So they're lagging by, uh, what is it, about 12 seconds or something <coughs> in this case. Um, so, uh, they, uh, as I said, some of the providers will also do a little bit of annotation for you. So, in this case, what they're doing is, uh, see, the, this is the news story itself, and they're marking up certain uh, chunks of text that might be useful to you, right? So, Physicians Adult Daycare Inc. and Source Inc., they have put org tags around them, so that means that these are uh, names for an organization, and that could be useful to you as... Uh, as, a, as a client working with this new story because you might make some inferences based on that. Right. Um, all right. So uh, those were push feeds. Uh, pull feeds are the normal feeds that you can uh, play with. The way pull feeds work is uh, there is a, there, there's a fixed URL and you're going to be checking that URL occasionally. And when you check it, uh, you get an XML that represents a list of posts in that stream. Right. So the big difference there is you check that XML whenever uh, you, t you check that URL whenever you want to. So so you're pulling data from them. The data is not being pushed to you, uh, and you can uh, you can check it as often as you want or as uh, or as rarely as you want. So uh, what you get is uh, you get a list of items that are available. Um, items contain timestamps that allows you to quickly figure out what you've seen, what you haven't seen before, and just. Uh, work on the things that you have seen. Um, and the list itself contains, usually contains a pretty useful field, the TTL field. That tells you how much time you don't have to check this URL again. So the TTL field, it tells you if they published it at a certain time, for how many minutes after that time they will not change the contents of that. URL. So uh, what that means is you don't have to waste time checking that thing because it will not have changed within the TTL um, time span. So uh, pull feeds are nice. They're very easy to work with. It's, it's very easy to write code for them. Um, so pretty much all of the streaming APIs on the web that you have, they, they're, they're they take the form of the pool feeds. The main drawback of those things, if you have tried playing with them, is always coverage. Right. So I've yet to meet uh, uh, a content provider who offers everything that they have on their website in the form of an RSS feed. Usually they offer a very small percentage of their content as RSS, something like 1% or 5%. Uh, and then there's 95% which is available on their website in various ways, but you can't get it from the RSS. Why they do it, it's unclear. Uh, so that's really the main drawback. Uh, you are, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be getting a sampling of content rather than the full content. So uh, here's an example of, uh, of a blog aggregation, right? So that's what a blog would look like. Uh, so you have a title, you have the URL. This, this is the URL that you would be checking, and then there would be a list of items, right? So this is one item, and you'll have a whole array of them. 
um, right? And each item is going to have a publication date uh, and sometimes a unique ID. So you can check those to see if you have processed that, uh, that entry already. And if you have, you ignore it. If you haven't, you fetch it from the link and so on. Right. And that's the TTL field uh, that I mentioned. So what you know is uh, if the publication date is 0041.50 uh, on the 29th of September 2008, then, th then this list will not change for the next 60 minutes from that point in time. So you don't have to check it again. Um, okay, and here's an example for uh, here's an example for Twitter, and this is as Twitter was in 2010. It, it has changed a bit, uh, so you you still have your publication date, and uh, this this is a single item. Um, this is the tweet it, uh, this is the tweet itself, and then you have the metadata around it. So uh, I guess useful things. The geotags are useful if you have them, but they're not uh, they're not there most of the time. Uh, 